So today's adventure involves the 12 valve Cummins and we're working on the injectors. Now I didn't actually tape any of the process of taking these things out. I'm sure there's another, enough other videos out there that show you how to do that. Now what we're going to try and do is rebuild these things ourselves. I know diesel injection is not something I am super familiar with but guess what always a good time to learn and I didn't want to pay you know a professional shop to either you know pop test these to see it where they're at or to actually do the work I looked into buying some you know brand new Bosch injectors uh, they were around 150 170 I think maybe a little bit less a little bit more but somewhere around there a piece for new ones and even then people said the pop pressures were sometimes inconsistent you didn't know what you get so there was that now the truck that these came out of still was running all right but it's always sort of had some odd characteristics that I could never really nail down exactly you know maybe that's just how the truck was it's got 318,000 miles on it right now and I believe everything including these injectors have never been apart so I guess 318,000 miles according to what I've read there's a good chance that these may be time for a uh, rebuild or replacement well in the process of trying to be stubborn and not you know have anybody do work for me I found that there's these cheap Chinese injection pressure testers here available for under a hundred bucks now for that price I mean heck you buy the little uh, nozzle rebuilds for these things buy a freaking pressure tester and you're still maybe only 250 bucks into the whole shebang now I've seen these being sold under a whole bunch of different names but they all look to be the same thing just repackaged and relabeled they are these you know Chinese made you know highest of quality nothing but the best of equipment here now it's actually a lot more substantial than I was expecting I mean this thing's I was expecting you know a little tiny pressure tester when I get it in the mail for 80 bucks you know but no this thing's actually substantial I mean heck of a big gauge on there now I was reading reviews and people say that this is a really odd thread so if this thing gets screwed up you can't find something luckily everything here is pretty much steel until you get up to there so I'm sure you could always weld something on make something work probably be, be careful since you're working with some high pressure you don't want something exploding and breaking off the top but hey, if there's no air it's all hydraulic so it shouldn't be that bad wear your safety goggles now I did actually pay a couple bucks more for this one just because I bought it from Amazon because I figured there's a good chance it's not gonna work and we'll have to be returning it or getting it swapped out so I figured they were a safer bet as far as getting a service you know nothing like a typo right off the bat so if I have time maybe we'll play find the misspellings well that didn't take long safety precautions ooh Zing Zhao 01 so just like the Chinese made jacks and stuff I'm sure there may be a good chance we have to go in there and replace some miscellaneous o-rings take things apart and you know end up filing things down smoothing stuff out and actually make it work like it's supposed to because the, you know the finished quality is usually not great but if this thing works basically it pays for itself in one rebuild of stuff uh, or checking those injectors why pay somebody to do it for you when you can do it yourself so we're putting in some uh, clean diesel fuel and some ATF for lubrication definitely not running it through a coffee filter and another thing I would recommend is usually there's all kinds of you know crud and when you're working these things for the first time on cheap stuff you may have some uh, grit or some dirt or whatever flowing through here so I wouldn't just hook up the tube right away and start running it I'm actually gonna pump quite a bit out of here just to flush it out and make sure there's no dirt in it now you get a couple of the adapters for the injectors and the one does fit the Cummins 12 valve injector so that's a plus and then you also get one that's a little bit smaller so we mounted it on a stump because we don't have a real workbench to uh, bolt it to so what we're going for is 3770 and you can watch here we'll put, put, put up the pressure and eventually it'll pop
Now that first injector popped at right around 3500 PSI. So that makes me feel a little bit more confident about the accuracy of this gauge because you know you really don't have anything to compare it to. We're going to take note of what all the injectors pop at and compare them at the end but at least it's in the ballpark so you know fingers crossed that this thing is at least somewhat reliable. Heck maybe I'm doing things wrong you know the instructions were so thorough but as you're pumping this thing up you can also and when this is out start cranking it in and that also raises the pressure until it pops. That's a little bit slower and more controlled if you want to get an accurate reading on where things are going. So that's where all the numbers came in. So remember we were shooting for 37.75 say and honestly I was hoping to see maybe a bigger discrepancy in there you know something that would kind of be a telltale sign that maybe something was up but they were all fairly close a little bit on the low side maybe that has to do just with the age over time the spring takes a set I couldn't really tell any uh, really major issues with the spray pattern uh, they were all shooting about even so nothing I could majorly tell there even with the carbon deposits on it well alright time to get down the rebuilding here and I, once again you know these aren't too bad to take apart you can look up the specs these caps come off and that's where you replace the innards here with the uh, little needle and the uh, outside there I was able to score a whole set of Bosch you know OEM parts here for 22 bucks a piece off of Rock Auto I bought the last six that they had so you know good luck there for anybody else but well actually these are the lower horsepower ones so I'm sure there's probably not a whole lot of people looking for them anyways but yeah can't argue with the price on those and we got one of the generic install kits and got some of the little shims here too for adjusting the uh, pop-off pressure in case we need to well we learned a valuable lesson on this one when you pull the spring out uh, oftentimes there's a shim you know it may appear that there's no shim in there however because on this one I hit the heck out of it no shim looked inside couldn't see one oh well must not be a shim so clean that one out sprayed it out carb cleaner air the whole deal go to put it back together not enough uh, preload on the spring I actually just was testing it with the old uh, injector in here just to make sure everything went back together right and I added an extra shim to see how much the pop-off pressure would increase well turns out it doesn't work at all it was just spewing diesel fuel out the end so I took apart another one and if you have to really hit it there's the shim so I just spent the last half hour recreating honey I shrunk the kids out in the driveway and uh, to no avail we lost the shim I'll probably find it when I'm done with this job but luckily we have enough of the aftermarket ones we can build them up and make our own shim pack another disturbing thing I found in this one is this little tiny super thin shim here and if you look at it it's actually breaking apart it's so thin uh, I don't know where those pieces went they might be down still in the nozzle somewhere but that's definitely not good so eh, it was at least worth going in here and going through these things I've about had it for this day. We're going to come back tomorrow, uh, get some fresh paper towels, get everything cleaned up, and make sure we don't get any dirt into the new stuff when we start putting it back together. So nothing crazy on the rebuilds. Clean everything real well, and you end up putting the new ones in. Now, oddly enough, I thought I was going to need some extra shims to get the pop pressure back up to uh, where we wanted it, but found out just putting in these new ones here raised everything up about two to three hundred psi so thus far we haven't needed any shims these are popping right at 3800 3900 with the original shims in them so now we're in the home stretch we're testing all the injectors that we put back together making sure they come in right and wouldn't you know it the pressure tester is starting to leak it's dripping right out of the uh, close off knob now we found out that if we kind of uh, tighten this up almost to the whole way being closed, it'll quit dripping just enough to get it done. So we'll be replacing O-rings in there. This almost reminds me of setting up axle gears. You know, it's a lot of repetitive taking things apart, putting it together just to get a very fine adjustment done. Uh, we've been able to keep each one of these 
from right around 3,800 to 3,900 PSI. So, you know, it's a little bit of a range, but we're pretty dang close. So in the end, though, I guess this was still worth it. At least it made it through one job most of the way. And it, you know, it did what it needed to do. One recommendation I might have is, I don't know if I was using this uh, knob incorrectly, whether it's just to tighten it up to hold a pressure, or I honestly don't know. I mean, the really thorough instructions don't exactly tell you what to do with that. So, yeah, maybe don't uh, play with that knob so much and you'll get some more life out of your tester. I'm sure there's probably some fancy tool to clean out these seats here, but a pen works nicely to keep any debris from falling in there while you just blow it out with air. So in the end, seems like the engine actually runs a bit smoother when you lug it down into the low RPMs. And maybe it's just in my head, but I swear that when you really get on it, the my amount of black smoke is a little bit less and the boost pressure is actually a little bit higher than it usually is so maybe that was a sign that we're getting better more you know efficient combustion well we might have lost an hour of our life looking for this washer but we found it 